Our next guest is Eric Kwe, the founder and CEO of Timely Hero, a total trailblazer. He left a big tech job to dive headfirst into the wild world of startups. This Taiwanese immigrant brought his digital transformation skills from the global stage to Japan. And guess what? He fell in love with the culture. Now he's on a mission to connect Japan to the world with Timely Hero, a global skill sharing platform powered by AI. They match instructors and learners across borders, making it easier than ever to share knowledge. Plus, they throw in real-time translation video chat for a truly seamless experience. In his talk, Empowering Global Learning, Timely Hero's Story Unveiled, Eric shares his journey of leaving the corporate nest and building a platform that connects people across the globe. Here's Eric. Hi everyone. Um, I'm Eric. So, um, so I'm very excited to be here and to um, represent it Dimes. And I operate um, a skill matching platform called Tiny Hero. At a Tiny Hero, people from all over the world can set up their skills and can offer the best they can have, and to allow the learners from the world to access to the best knowledge in their local languages. And um, so. Uh, that includes uh, for both the video contents as well as the real-time seminars, as well as we leverage the latest AI chatbot knowledge to be able to allow people to create a digital trends and to capture their knowledges and to allow people to access their time without taking their physical time. Today, I'd like to share you why I started Tiny Hero. So um, the, the, the story started from, I'm originally from Taiwan. I was grew up in Taipei. And I learned entrepreneurship from my parents, actually, my father. My father was an entrepreneur, and he was a dropout from the junior high school and started up his company in the 1970s, uh, a clothing business. And that was run pretty well, and uh, he was started to expand to the new businesses in the 1980s, which is a car, a car, a, a automobile business, uh, which is, the, uh, uh, he tried to partnership with uh, a Spanish car manufacturer called Seat. Uh, probably some of them heard about that before. And so uh, he is the one to set up a deal trying to bring the Seattle cars um, business to, to Taiwan. And uh, that business, um, you know, during the times while economy flies, people, uh, you know, goes from the motorcycles to cars. So this is a bit the best timing to bring the, biz, uh, the new business. But that business didn't went well. And the, the main reason for that is because like, he doesn't have the required skills to be able to build that business. Like, uh, for example, the language skills, he didn't know how to, he doesn't speak even a single word of English. And so he found it hard to negotiate a deal uh, with the, uh, with the uh, foreign partners. Then, um, so that's what I, what I learned a lot as well is you really have the, need the required skill to be able for you to shine in a business you're driving. Like father, like son. Um, I've always had this desire to start my own business since childhood. And to achieve this, I studied English, Japanese, and technologies. You know, I take it from what my father was not be able to drive and trying to learn it, and travel abroad to grow, and uh, pretty much learn uh, to broaden my knowledges, and decide to work outside of Taiwan to be able to gain global experiences. I decided to give myself uh, a, a target, uh, well, actually, when I landed in Japan, of uh, on the 90 days uh, sightseeing visa, uh, I didn't have the work uh, offer yet. So, um, but I believe with the master's degree and uh, with my language skills, I should be able to find a job easily. But actually, in fact, it's not true. I was very struggled to find my first job in Japan. So uh, I remember one day when I walk into the office and trying to register a form, uh, um, and that company will usually will introduce me to other enterprises you know, as a job um, kind of recruiter. But uh, in the end, like, uh, you know, I, when I was trying to submit the form, and I was rejected by that guy and telling about, like, hey, Eric, uh, we know you have a very good background, but unfortunately, you don't speak perfect Japanese. So uh, that is the first struggling, uh, you know, struggling experience that I have in the past. Like, I could not even, even find a single job. And uh, so at the end of my 90 days, um, I, luckily, I picked up a phone call, and that was actually coming from an online bookstore company, 
which uh, turned out to be uh, uh, one of the most successful company today, is Amazon. And so I joined, um, I picked up a phone call, they decided to give me an offer because they see there's a potential. And they never hired um, a new grad, but they decided to give me my opportunities. And I'm working for them uh, for 10 years. And so uh, the most of the roles I'm trying to do is really about on the digital transformations and to change the industries and to actually bring the more value for that. So um, uh, you can think about it one way. Uh, when I uh, first worked in that industries, where receiving about the uh, book publishers or vendors were actually using the form and fax machine and to print uh, the purchase orders to Amazon to, you know, to request for the, uh, you know, the invoice as well. So um, now I was, asking, I was asked about how can I provide uh, the faster fax machine to them so they can print the purchase order faster. But instead, like, what we do is really bring the new way of how we rethink about what the business should be. So uh, we bring the EDI system so we can know about their inventory real time, we can know their cost in real time, so we make the best buying decisions for them. So, um, so this is one of the examples about like, you know, how a traditional business can be transformed and using the latest uh, knowledge, technology to be able to help shape out the business. Then uh, after that also, I was leading the Kindle projects, which is the uh, you know, digital books businesses. Uh, but again, I was talking with the, uh, traditional publishers, uh, which is they were, uh, you know, were very against about the ideas about the, the digital edition of books because they, you know, there's a piracy problems, and what about that would distract or you know, really affect the physical book business. But in the end, uh, after bringing the uh, digital editions of books, we're able to prove that actually uh, readers actually read more books because they can bring their books everywhere with them on the travel, on the go, in the on the train, right? And on the supply side as well, the publishers actually uh, used to control which book can be published. But we actually democratized that spaces to allow the authors be able to make a call to do the self publishings So that's kind of one way that we have never done in the past 100 years, but by be changing about uh, how we redo the business, we actually will actually uh, boost up the, the book business and the industries uh, a lot. So after that, I joined Google um, for three years and we basically were working on how can we provide a, a subscription business for, uh, for movies and TVs, as well as for audiobooks. Uh, we also face the same situation about people, um, you know, go to a DVD, CD shop to rent for DVD and DVD, remember that? And so you have to return that after seven days like that. So we also, uh, you know, kind of disrupt that business as well, so that we would do that online, streaming. And so we allow people to watch it at any time in the living room experiences, right? And so that's, uh, that's going to give an example about like, a, a, in no matter what industry you are, there's always opportunities about look, look about what user really wants and focus on the pain points and try to use AI and DX really to help you to shape up the businesses. And uh, after that, sort of, we, uh, I also jumped from uh, the Google to uh, startup areas, which I helped uh, Didi, uh, which is the uh, joint ventures from Didi Chushin and the SoftBank in Japan, and to launch the taxi hailing business. When the time we launched the business, we've seen about taxi drivers driving the taxis everywhere on the streets and with empty passenger in the car. And while, uh, so that's very inefficient way how they run the business that, uh, during that time. So we leverage AI to drive the demand forecasting and trying to tell our drivers when to go where and to pick out the orders, right? And so we allow the passengers a better experience about they will be able to uh, place orders while they're sitting in the restaurant, they're sitting at home, waiting, you know, not going out on the streets, uh, under the rain, under the snows, and raising their hands and looking for the taxis, right? And that behavior is no longer existing, right? And so uh, after that, um, so while I was, uh, I was joining a food uh, business, I launched Food Panda in Japan as a CEO for the company, and uh, we also helped to, uh, the restaurants um, during the pandemic period of time, not be able to get a gas into the restaurants, trying to find a new way how users can stay at home with one, one click and get the food they want at home. Right? And so that, uh, that experience actually inspired me about what, why I started Tiny Hero, because when I hired a lot of the boys during that time, I found out uh, a lot of them are actually from a very smart, a very top university in Japan, and are artists, are musicians, are uh, comedians. So their skill sets actually about how to sing a song, 
how to draw the arts, you know, and, and also their brand about their, you know, how they do the consulting for others. But they end up using their leg, riding on a bicycle, and to work, and end up getting minimum wage on their hourly pay. So I found that so unfair because the, uh, you know, that's in a world that really desired to have the uh, infrastructure and platform to allow people to offer their best skills, no matter where they are. And those kind of variety of skills will find someone who actually will need your skills and you will be able to become a mentor, you can become the game changer for the persons in the world to, to address that. So, um, so I, that's why I founded uh, this platform called uh, Tiny Hero, utilizing AI which eventually uh, were creating something that could be used worldwide and uh, will, um, that can help people to access to the knowledge. Uh, after I launched this business, um, I received a call from uh, organizations from Africa, and they are sharing about the situation about the, uh, the, uh, the refugee camp in Kenya. They were talking about the kids here were actually waiting for a donation and the food every day and every week but they don't have the dream, they don't have hope. Because they were born there, they would not be able to get out. So without the access to the good educations, the kids was, were living without the dreams. So we were, uh, we were very, uh, you know, very aggressive on working on that, and how can we offer the best education for the kids. So people get a skill, people find a job, and the people can go out from the uh, refugee camp. You know, if we can create a case for the first 100 uh, kids to go out from the camp, that will create the dreams for the other people who live in the refugee camps, right? And so that's why I think that I'm very, very, uh, uh, you know, exciting about building uh, the belief of the building possibly impacts uh, on society. And finally, um, we want to get, uh, get this out uh, for the people uh, to, who require knowledge to be able to use it. And uh, for that, uh, instead of like, we are not a big company, so we cannot do everything by us alone. We, uh, we are, right, we are right, right here, really want to work with you, all of you who have the skills. Do not hesitate to share your skills you know, in any ways. And we as a platform, we would love to spread your skills um, to the uh, right person we need to. That's one of the reasons why we name it Tiny Heroes. We expect you to become the hero for someone else in the world at the right time. So, um, so uh, that's... Uh, um, so that, that's pretty much the things we expect to, uh, to build this society with other views, and we, uh, we hope to gather all the power from all over the world and to make history together. And um, so that's all the, the story about the Tiny Heroes. And thanks again for hearing about my story today. And uh, you know, uh, it's my pleasure to be here. Thank you.